Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel! Today it is time to build a new habitat in the Desert Adventure Park and this time we'll be building a habitat for the mandrills. So as I told you guys last time in the previous episode of the Desert Adventure Park where we added the lemurs, uh, we are starting to build an African primate area in the zoo. Uh, so last time we added the lemurs, they are basically like an, uh, you know, the first introducing habitat that introduces you to the land of the uh, primates, African primates, and today it is time to add the mandrills, and basically those will not be the last primates, in the next episode we'll also add uh, the other species. Uh, you guys really enjoyed my uh, idea for the lemurs, I mean I built two islands for them last time, uh, so if by any means you haven't seen that video, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen, uh, so definitely go and check it out because we'll be, uh, today's habitat is actually a bit inspired by those two islands. Uh, I mean, I wanted to make it cohesive to look like, uh, you know, uh, they belong in the same area in, of the zoo, so I'll be coping over some uh, of the elements of those habitats, so if you haven't seen this uh, video, I will recommend you to do so. But yeah, today it is time for our mandrills, and this is another, uh, like an island habitat, uh, just as we did for the lemurs. As you guys could see, I firstly uh, like uh, did the shape of an island and so on and then I started to line it with the uh, matte pieces and then I basically skipped it and showed you guys the finished uh, project, I mean the finished island uh, with the banks of the water area lined with the concrete or the matte pieces uh, because simply it took so long, such a long time to do it and I skipped it, not to make this video too long. Uh, if you want to see how I've built it, how I did the lining, you can watch my flamingo habitat where I showed you this uh, more, or the last, uh, also in the last uh, lemur habitat video, I also showed you guys a bit more how we do it. But uh, if you are a follower of the series, I thought that you know it could be a bit boring to watch it over and over again and I promise you guys that it is the last uh, habitat for a while, like an island habitat because we had a lot of those in this uh, uh, in this zoo and I don't want to repeat myself so uh, this is the last time but I thought that it would be perfect for mandrills. Uh, also if as you know this zoo is a bit inspired, I'm not like recreating this zoo but I am more like inspired by a layout of it and it is a Dubai uh, Safari Park uh, so in this particular place where we're building there is also an island habitat it is for another uh, species of lemur but I thought that you know adding uh, adding a third lemur island won't be attractive to watch simply uh, they don't have mandrills uh, in the zoo so i decided that i will add mandrills in here uh, and i will do something really cool for them so last time when i uploaded the lemur habitat i got so many questions for you guys both uh, on Facebook or on my Instagram or here on YouTube uh, how the keepers are able to uh, you know go uh, to the island to clean it and basically they can't this was always my answer they cannot do it uh, we just need to imagine that they can uh, I have the defecation uh, option turned off so the animals basically don't poop <laughs> and uh, because of it you know there is no need to clean uh, the habitat normally when uh, the keeper doesn't have an access to a certain part of habitat the poop it just disappears after some time I think uh, I will place all of the uh, food enrichment items uh, inside of the shelter where the keepers obviously will have an access to where the habitat gate will be so uh, they will be able to feed the animals but they won't be able to come to this island uh, like in a real life zoo it would be <laughs> possible for sure 
you know, they use normally use, for example, uh, a small boat, or they just have those very high, like uh, rubber trousers or something that they can cross the water, or there's a shallower part or something. Uh, but they cannot do it in here because we don't have such mechanics in the game, obviously, and. If it isn't your thing, if you like your keepers to have an access to all of the parts of the habitat, I totally understand it, uh, but I try to go, you know, for the more realistic approach in my uh, build, so that's why uh, we just need to imagine that they will be able to go there to maintain, maintain the habitat, but obviously in the game they are not able to do so. So, uh, while looking for inspiration for this habitat, I found out that most of those nice looking mandrill habitats in Zeus uh, are very rocky with a lot of rock formations, not too many climbing structures, uh, of course they had some but not as crazy as uh, other monkeys. Uh, this is basically because the uh, mandrill is more of the terrestrial monkey. Uh, it climbs trees and can do it, but uh, it prefers to stay on the ground. They sleep in the trees, they feel safer in the trees, but they are looking for food and so on on the ground. So they are grazing a lot, you know, spending their time uh, on the rocks and the ground. And that's why their habitats looks like, look like this. And this is what I wanted to mimic here a bit. Uh, let me just tell you that I am not the best when it comes to building large rock formations in this game because I feel like they always look uh, weird and wonky and not too realistic so I definitely struggled in here I started it over and over again and still I am not 100% uh, happy with the thing that we'll see here uh, I still think that it doesn't look really realistic but uh, I wasn't able to do it better basically so I have to live with it. Uh, don't get me wrong, I still love this habitat, I love uh, like this idea of monkeys living on the rocks and in the caves and so on. Uh, so that's what I was going on in for here, uh, but I still wanted the rock formations to look more, more like realistic. I tried to add, you know, uh, because I changed the color of the aquatic rocks to the color that is really similar to the temperate rocks in the game. Uh, so I tried to add some temperate rocks uh, like to the rock formation uh, for some texture variation so it doesn't look uh, like so repetitive and so like artificial. Uh, of course those uh, rock formation in Zeus they are artificial, they're made of concrete or some other stuff uh, so still they don't look like hyper realistic sometimes they do uh, if the company that produces them knows what they do and are good at it uh, they look, look really really good but uh, yeah I try to make it look more realistic later on I will add some plants also to the rock formations but not too many because as it as they are artificial they like the plants just won't grow in there maybe if there's like some soil or something I can Accumulated between the crevices they could grow uh, but yeah definitely there'll be some plants and after I add them this will look uh, much better basically uh, so yeah I hope you guys like this idea and uh, you know uh, and basically like and enjoy my rock formations uh, they are slowly not like, growing on me uh, at first I was like oh no I really don't like this uh, but I like kept going with uh, you know uh, adding the uh, climbing frames and uh, and you know plants and some other smaller rocks and so on. And after that, I thought, okay, it kind of looks okay, <laughs> not my best job, but still, uh, I really like this habitat and I like the idea. I just wish that maybe we had like a. Uh, more variation of the aquatic rocks it will be like perfect because sometimes it can look a bit repetitive when you add a lot of those rocks and try to build a big rock formation. 
When it comes to the mandrills, I think that the mandrills are actually my favorite monkeys in the game. Uh, because yeah, mandrills are actually monkeys and they are the largest monkeys on earth. Uh, they are not apes, although they are very uh, similar to the apes because of the, their size. They are basically very big, especially the male. Uh, they are more closely related to baboons and uh, and the species of monkey that is called the manga bay uh, so they are in this kind of family uh, for me it is always confusing when it comes to the apes and monkeys because basically in my language in Pol polish we call all of them the monkey <laughs> basically and i know that in other like european uh, languages at least some of them uh, there is no also no like differentiation between the ape and monkey they're all just monkeys so uh, I sometimes make this uh, mistake of calling for example gorilla or chimpanzee uh, the monkey because you know I just translated from my own native language uh, but yeah definitely in uh, for you English speakers, you have like this uh, differentiation bef between the monkey and the ape, and the mandrill is definitely an ape. Uh, if you would like to know, because sometimes I get those comments uh, to share how it is like pronounced in my own language, so uh, basically monkey uh, in Polish is maupa. So for us, the mandrill is maupa, the chimpanzee is maupa, and gorilla is maupa, and also the capuchin monkey is also a maupa. Uh, so uh, you guys, so you guys can definitely see now why this is so confusing to me. But yeah, definitely the mandrill is the monkey, the largest one actually, as I told you guys on Earth. So this is really exciting, and also a monkey with a largest sexual dimorphism, all of them all because of the like a crazy a size difference between the male and the female uh, and also uh, because uh, of the prominent like colorful face of the male uh, this is actually very unique because uh, because the mandrill is actually the only species of mammal on earth that has a prominent uh, blue color on their body there is no other mammal that has this kind of coloration of course there are some in this like a grayish bluish color like some antelopes uh, or uh, cats for example but you know this bright color it's mo mo it is mostly associated with for example birds tropical birds or the fish uh, but the mandrill is uh, the only animal, the only mammal uh, on earth that has like a color on that on its body. So it's really, really interesting. More of that, uh, more on the mammal, more on the mandrills uh, later in the video because I will share with you guys some fun facts about the mandrills because they are really, really fascinating. And because of it, I think that the mandrills are one of my favorites in the game when it comes to the monkeys and apes. Uh, their model is also really beautiful in game. Uh, I love their behaviors. I love how the male looks and also, you know, the small females. Uh, definitely one of my favorites. Uh, I actually wish we had so much more monkeys in this game. We are lacking so many of them. Uh, like my visit, my recent visit to the Barcelona Zoo, which I shared with you guys in my uh, last uh, Elm City Zoo uh, video, uh, more about the visit. Uh, it just, you know, uh, showed me how many uh, species of monkeys there are in a zoo. I didn't pay attention to that, but now that I, you know, uh, realized that and I recall all my previous vi visits to other zoos, I just, you know, I was just amazed how many species of monkeys basically there are in, uh, you know, average zoos. I mean, the smaller ones, like, for example, capuchins, tamandrins, and all of those small uh, lemurs, and you know, and we are lacking them in the game. Of course, we have lemurs, and now we have also uh, another one, uh, the newly added lemur in the game that 
I somehow predicted in my last video, so it was funny because I released the Limer video and I still told you guys that, uh, you know, the Frontier released this mysterious animal something and for me it looks like a, a black and white raft Limer and some time ago, sometime after, you know, releasing my video, the Limer was announced, so I was really, really happy about it. And actually, I uh, added the Limers to one of the islands. They are living now with the Red Love raft lemurs so we have the red raft lemurs with the black and white raft lemurs on the one island and uh, there'll be a tour actually here uh, in this zoo soon i think i will build two more habitats and then i will take you guys for a short tour uh, to show you guys to do an update basically on the zoo and you'll be able to see the white and black and white raft lemurs on the islands with uh, the other species for sure but yeah, the monkeys are basically the thing that is missing in this game uh, and I hope that they'll be added for uh, in the future. I'm super hopeful. One species that we are lacking for sure is the baboon. Like the baboon is one of those staple zoo animals. A lot of zoos have them and I don't know why we still didn't get them. Uh, this is like a perfect uh, animal for DLC because I think that a lot of people would like to have um, uh, the baboon in their zoo. So maybe they are waiting for some other DLC to drop but we had an African DLC and there were no baboons and I was a bit disappointed, but uh, who knows, maybe we'll get them in the future. So when it comes to the monkeys, we are now building the climbing frames for this habitat. So as the mandris are mostly terrestrial, but they still like a bit of climbing, uh, I didn't go too crazy with the climbing structures. I just, you know, added some of them, uh, some of the, uh, like the shelves uh, on the rock formation. I thought that they will look cool, that they can rest and there, they like a climb on there. I also wanted to make sure that they will be able to climb on the top of the rock formation, so I added the uh, climbing frames just like that. I also added a lot of ropes uh, for them to go from one, uh, you know, one uh, part to another. And I also like created this climbing frame with the dead trees and branches. This is inspired by some. Uh, mandrill habitat I saw online but I cannot recall where it was uh, so sorry for that they are unfortunately not able to use it and this is actually one of my uh, complaints and other complaints about this game I uh, don't get me wrong I love it but from time to time I share with you guys uh, my complaints basically about the planet zoo and my complaint is that why the broken trees are not climbable like, it makes a perfect sense to build a climbing frames uh, out of them, uh, like, just as, you know, the regular zoos do it, like, they uh, create the climbing frames mostly from uh, dead trees, uh, and this actually looks so cool in the habitats when they do it, because it looks way more natural than using, you know, artificial logs or something, uh, but why the animals cannot, like, climb it? I'm not sure, I don't know and it doesn't make sense for me and I think that they should change it in the future because it basically doesn't make sense. <laughs> and the climbing frames would look so cool if we would be able to, you know, add the, those uh, dead trees to them and to see animals actually climbing them. I mean, they can climb the regular trees, but they cannot climb the dead trees. What's the difference? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yeah, this is a PT and I wish that it will be changed in the future. This would be so, so cool. Uh, so you guys are able to see me now adding the plants to this habitat. I didn't want to go too crazy, but I did, unfortunately, because I love the plants in this game. And uh, my complaint about the rocks doesn't belong to the plants at all. I think that, you know, adding the right plants to this game can look so, so realistic. And the plants are just wonderful. So I kind of wish that I would be, I would be able to do the rocks on the same level, but... Uh, I basically need to do my lesson and try to, you know, uh, maybe use the regular rocks more often than, you know, the aquatic rocks, which I love, but they don't basically look too realistic. But yeah, that definitely doesn't go with the plants. I actually skipped, uh, you know, adding plants to these habitats. I just showed you the first half 
of adding the plants and then I skipped because basically those are the plants that we were adding in the previous episodes of this zoo and I'm pretty sure you guys know by now how I do it. I just have my a list of uh, my favorite plants for this zoo like hearted you know you can add those hearts to make the list of your favorites and I use this mix and it always looks good and it always suits this African desert biome uh, so uh, this was what I basically did I mixed those plants and that's how I basically did it and how I do, do it in all of my habitats in here I wanted to tell you guys more about it at the beginning of this video but basically I got distracted and forgot about it and started to talk about the actual video and we'll be doing today uh, but Planet Zoo recently uh, shared some news about the new update and this is so amazing because I feel that it is actually a bit fast <laughs> when it comes to the new update because uh, the recent DLC and the update, a major update, they weren't like, released so long ago. So uh, yeah, I really like it. I really like that we are getting a new uh, update right now. And the feature that they announced by now uh, is the restaurant. Uh, we'll basically have right now the uh, restaurant, both the... Uh, restaurant with the actual interior and the restaurant with the uh, outside seating basically uh, so we'll be able to you know link the seats to an actual rest restaurant and this is so so cool because now all of the restaurants that we are building just you know for a looks of it <laughs> will be functioning for example my uh, restaurant my food hall in the Elm Peel City Zoo right now will be uh, actually functioning and yeah this is so amazing this is so amazing for uh, you know building those more realistic parts of our zoos so I am very very happy about this update and on the photo of uh, you know the actual announcements of the new update there are also two new things there was a new plant and there are some boys on the uh, water so there is a huge speculation right now what DLC will be getting I don't think uh, unfortunately that it will be birds looking at this picture I thought that we'll get aviaries and birds but looking at this picture I'm not sure I'm guessing it will be uh, the European uh, DLC which I am perfectly happy about <laughs> as long as we'll get the aviaries uh, later on uh, because basically as you guys know I am from Europe so uh, anything connected with Europe and European uh, animals is amazing for me because this is very close from home and from what I know uh, so in my local zoos in my country uh, there are a lot of European animals I know how their habitats look like and this is for me it is amazing and also the because I'm sure that right now we'll get the modular and building pieces so the European ar architecture is actually amazing so if they'll add something like this I am down for it uh, because I saw some comments that uh, of people that were not happy uh, about this potential you know European deep pack that it will be boring for them they won't spend money for it uh, but for me uh, personally I think that it will be amazing and uh, the other speculation is that we'll get something with uh, aquatic animals because of those boys on the water uh, that you know this is some kind of new barrier or something underwater barrier so uh, some people think that we'll get like a second part of the aquatic DLC basically uh, with more aquatic animals but we'll just have to wait and see <laughs> I guess this is like a first DLC I think that we don't have any clue uh, like about it and what there will be basically uh, so this is exciting and uh, I cannot wait for new updates and things like this
Uh, one more thing about Planet Zoo and the things that they announce and share with us on the social media is that they actually uh, created a thread on their forums and they shared the threads uh, in their social media and in this thread on their forums they asked uh, who is your favorite uh, content creator uh, you know creating stuff uh, connected with Planet Zoo and actually a lot of guys mentioned a lot of you guys mentioned me and I'm so so grateful about it there there were some uh, you know amazing comments why it was me and uh, you know why you guys enjoy my videos so thank you uh, to everyone who uh, like added their comments there this means a lot to me because it basically shows uh, the depths of the game that uh, you like my content that you know you uh, watch my videos and you are getting me exposed to them so thank you for Thank you, thank you guys, this really means a lot to me. And if you want to add your comment there, I would be so, so grateful. Just go to uh, Frontier Forums, the Planet Zoo game forums, and uh, there's a news and announcement section, and there you can find uh, the thread about the favorite content creators, and I would be so grateful if you could share my name in it, uh, if you could find a second to do it. Uh, yeah, that would mean a world to me. So thank you guys to whoever uh, did that. Uh, I recognize some of you, so uh, this is amazing. Uh, I know who you are and thank you, thank you, thank you. This really means a world to me. So coming back to the video, as you guys can see, uh, I actually started to work on the shelter. Uh, I wanted to create this shelter in the very similar style to the one that we did for the lemurs because they are basically close to each other and I didn't want to come up with totally different style. I think, thought it made sense to do it uh, in a very similar way, but the interior of it will be totally different just because they are, you know, large and potentially dangerous monkeys. Uh, so I had to make a slightly different uh, interior of it. Uh, there will be a lot of you know mesh pieces one uh, big area for them to sleep and then uh, several smaller ones for them to be uh, separated if there's a need uh, for like a training rooms uh, if it makes any sense you know there are some uh, training rooms in the shelters where the animals are closed in and they are you know giving medication they are just uh, you know uh, they are trained to do this medical training. I mean, they are showing their teeth. They are uh, letting the uh, keeper, you know, examine them and so on. And to this, uh, they need a smaller space to, uh, you know, give those animals those training. Uh, also, I felt like my backstage areas are getting a bit repetitive, so I wanted to go for something a bit different this time. And this backstage area is a bit inspired by uh, a fellow content creator. I mean, his video that I saw recently, I hope he doesn't mind, basically. Uh, his name is Dan XG. I'm sure you know him, but if not, definitely give this guy a follow, a sub, go check his channel out because he does some amazing things on his channel. Uh, I really love his uh, Tropical Wings Zoo uh, series and this uh, backstage area is a bit inspired by his backstage for the Fennec Foxes that he showcased on his channel. Uh, recently, I watched this video and I was really amazed and uh, I really loved uh, the night quarters section and so on and that's what I was inspired by uh, while building this uh, shelter basically. Uh, I didn't include all of the footage of building this shelter because firstly I didn't want this video to be too long and secondly because there were some rapid and fast camera movements on the speed builds and I want, didn't want to, you guys to get dizzy. Uh, that's why I only showed you like a half of it uh, and I will showcase more in the cinematic shots by the end of this video. Uh, speaking about too long video, we are basically coming to the end and I still haven't shared with you the fun fact that I promised you guys. I am such a talkative person today, I don't know what happened. So maybe quickly I will share with you some fun facts before we end, but unfortunately I won't be able to tell you guys more about this uh, shelter. Uh, 
I hope you like it. If you have any questions about the shelter, please let me know down in the comment section. I will try to uh, reply to all the comments. Uh, but basically, I will also end the shelter out of the camera. I will do the roof and I will do the area uh, like around the habitat and run around the shelter all uh, of the camera and I will showcase it in the cinematics by the end of this video. And when it comes to the mandrills, like quick, very fast, uh, you know, uh, fun facts. Uh, so the coloration on mandrill face uh, shows its emotional state. Uh, the color is more pronounced when the animals is, are excited. Mandrills have uh, extremely long cunning teeth. Uh, they are two and a half inches long. Uh, they are used for self-defense and they also sometimes expose them as a sign of greeting. Mandrills have cheek pouches adapted for storage of food. Uh, these food reserves are used for later snacking. This is basically uh, very similar to the hamsters and it's quite funny. <laughs> Mandrills have long uh, front limbs that are used for walking and finding food. They have very skillful hands used for collecting, sorting and preparing food. Uh, mandrills are omnivorous. Uh, they eat uh, plant and animal based food. They usually eat different kinds of fruit, grass, fungi, insects, eggs and var various worms. Uh, they are active during the day, they spend most of the time on the ground searching for food uh, and are resting in the night uh, in the uh, treetops which provide ideal protection from predators. Main predators of mandrills are leopards, eagles, snakes, chimpanzees and humans. Uh, they live in large groups, up to 200 animals called troops. There are two types of groups, uh, first type include group composed of dominant male, large number of females and their offspring, second type refers to a group with high number of males and females. And mandrills are quite noisy animals, they communicate using high pitched sounds and crowns. So as you guys can see the mandrills are pretty interesting animals, I love them and I hope you enjoyed them as well and you enjoyed our habitat today and our build and definitely stay tuned uh, till the cinematics in the second. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider to subscribe to my channel. Uh, we almost have 3000 subscribers, which is mind blowing for me. Thank you guys. And if you are not a subscriber yet, please uh, consider clicking the subscribe button down below. This would really mean a world to me and will help my uh, little channel to grow. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up down below, uh, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video and comment down below if you enjoyed this video or if you have any recommendations for my future videos. Uh, this, those are definitely welcome. If you have any tips or things you would like to share, uh, I try to uh, reply to all of the comments so your comments for sure won't be unnoticed. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!